All right, glory to his name. We're here back at Living Spirit Ministries once again for our Wednesday night Bible study. Can everyone just raise up their hand wherever you are in this place, be it national, international, and all parts in between. If you're watching this tape delayed, you're watching this live, coming through on Zoom, coming through on Facebook Live, and eventually on YouTube, we're just asking that you just take a little bit of time that you glory in your Lord. He's brought you to this place. So I'm just asking you to just go to the place where he is. Can we do that? Can we glory in his name? Just for a little bit, just for a little bit. We're coming in, we're coming in. We got an action-packed Bible study tonight. And I know your time is precious, but I, I also want you to get into that, to that place. You know that place where you humbly submit on to the Lord, that place in which you glorify the Lord, that place in which you can receive the Lord. Come on, I need somebody to go with me. I need somebody to go with me. Because if you know, like I know, you know that he has been good to you. He's not just good to you, but he's good for you, right? He's like those minerals and those vitamins. They're good for you. You got to get your daily allowance. And as you get older, you probably need a little bit more of some of those vitamins and some of those minerals. You need more of your Jesus today. Can we, can we touch and agree on that? Oh, we're just glorying in his name just for a little bit, just for a little bit here. Just for a little bit. Let, let his word saturate. If he's been good to you, just just, just tap a toe, right? You, you, you don't have to come up if you're coming to the Zoom chat. You don't have to come up on there and show your face, but just tap a toe, tap a finger, just do something. Something that lets you know that God has been good in your life, that your heart is still beating, that you're your eyes are still seeing it. Even if you can't see that well, or if you're blind, just, just glory that you can taste and see that the Lord is good today. All right, all right, as we're coming in, we're coming in. If you're looking for a place to rightly divide the word and go to work for God, you're in the right place. If you're learning how to walk again in the Lord, you're in the right place. If you're learning just what this thing is called Christianity, what is this thing this, this, this man called Jesus Christ. What is this thing called our salvation? You're in the right place. We're going to talk a little bit about sin tonight and the severity of sin, the cost of sin, the corrupted image, and, and really, really hear the law and order of it all, uh, but the glory of it all. Can we go into prayer tonight? Can we just go into prayer tonight? All right. So Heavenly Father, we call to you, Father God, and we first and foremost thank you for this day. And Father God, we are grateful for this day, this hour, this very moment in which we are able to stand before you, Father God, knowing that we are not worthy, Father, but because of the blood that was shed on Calvary. And Father God, we're able to come before you. We're able to come before you. We're able to come to you, Father. And we thank you now in the name of Jesus. And because of that, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And Father God, we're asking that we lift our eyes up to the cross, Father. We're asking that we use it as our compass, our direction, Father God, today. For we know not the way that we should go, but you set the steps of the righteous are ordered by you, Father. And so as we are ordered by you, Father God, let us use your roadmap, your word, your instruction manual, Father God. And that's where we come before you tonight. As we learn to walk again, this time in you, with you, and through you, Father God, we first get to know you, Father God. We want to be in relationship with you. Then we want to be able to trust you, Father God, for you have not given up on us. And your word is true, Father God. And so as we trust in you, Father God, then we believe in you, Father God. And as we believe in you, Father God, you fill us up, Father God. You shift our situations, Father God, our circumstances and our problems, Father God, for your good. And we go forth. So, Father God, we declare and decree everything that is wrong in our lives, Father God, is made right by, with, and through you tonight. The blood of Jesus is still redeeming. It's still restoring. It's still healing. It's still resuscitating. It's still equipping, empowering, and encouraging us, Father God. And so as we go forth, Father God, we just love on you tonight. We're asking that something is said, something in the seed that will compel the one, Father God, to turn from his or her wicked ways and just believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. The testimony that you sent him to the cross for our sins, sins he didn't commit. You sent him for a death he didn't deserve. And because of that, Father God, he was crucified and buried and rose again and now sits at the right hand side of you. And he will come again. But Father God, we thank you for that today. That if they believe that, that the door to the kingdom is open, Father God, eternal life is theirs forevermore. And so, Father God, shift, shift in this place. We glory in your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. We're glorying in his name tonight. And so as we go forth, we, we just ask that you um, you come forth tonight with a, with a listening ear, uh, with a heart 
that is will, willing and ready to, to dissect this word. Okay, so hopefully, then we seem to have, have alleviated some technical de difficulties tonight. We've, we've dodged that, uh, that difficulty tonight every day. A little step further, a little step better. We're encouraged. Uh, but I did think last week, and, and if you haven't seen it, this first time in here, go ahead and check us out. We've got the previous sermons. We've got the previous Bible studies and a couple other things hanging up on our Facebook site, on our YouTube uh, site, Living Spirit Ministries for both of them. Uh, Twitter is a little bit immature, but we're getting there as well. So check us out on, on, on Twitter as well. Um, and in coming soon to you this Sunday, uh, we will have our physical sanctuary opened up. And so um, uh, I'll have um, our Pastor Talicia put that in throughout in the comment box. Uh, so come on in and stop by. If you're here in the greater Fayetteville area, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Rayford, Spring Lake, um, uh, Lumberton, uh, Rayford, any, any, any parts in between. If you want to come on down from Raleigh, uh, any of those parts in between, uh, 11 o'clock service. And if the Lord says the same, as we continue to grow this ministry, we want to eventually branch out to a nine o'clock service. Um, and then we want to have it to the point where it's so big, we, we will outgrow where we're at. But we're satisfied with just the one who will come and wants to disciple, who wants to spiritually mature in the Lord. And I'm so grateful and so thankful for how you all are helping to grow this ministry uh, via uh, taking over distance, right? And through Facebook, through YouTube, um, we're, 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 we're spanning in here through Zoom. We're, we're just, we're over Twitter, we're over a lot of things and, and pushing God's word, not my word, um, but God's word. And every time we can put God's word into the atmosphere, there is a shift. That's the song was talking about. The atmosphere is shifting and a shifting for our good because we're allowing him to come into there. So um, lots of avenues and lots of ways in which you could get God's word through this ministry. And we're looking out, um, looking to reach out into the community and to touch. And so um, we believe that we're not beholden uh, to an actual physical building. That's a place where God can come uh, and meet us and have that meeting engagement and fill us up. But what we really want to do is we want to change lives by, with, and through God's word, through his anointing. So hence why we want to learn to walk, right? Uh, hence our mantra, uh, to walk in the spirit. So we're learning to walk. So we're learning about God. We're, 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 we're growing and knowing God. We're in this relationship with God. So whether you're young in this walk, whether you're a little bit more mature, we can always learn a little bit something more. And that's something that as we walk for God, as we walk in God, as we learn about God and we trust in God and, and get to that point where we believe in God, right? Faith is something to hope for, but the evidence of things not seen. Every time that seed goes forth, every time the word of God goes forth, the word plants a seed inside of you. Receive that. So every time the word goes forth, whether it be a devotional, whether it be just little tidbits, whether it be you know, your brother and sister in Christ asking if you're shalom, you're just learning something about God in this walk, you're increasing that faith rep, because as your journey matures, as your journey furthers, and you mature, the challenges get even greater, but mighty is our God, he's mighty to save, and so he's going to continue to keep you up there, and so as you come in account of folks, right, they either come against you or come with you, or, or standing with you in the body of Christ, you want to be able to stand on something other than just your word, or stand on my word, right? Uh, because my word will take you someplace, but I cannot guarantee you it's going to take you to where you need to be. So stand on God's word. God's word will never fail. His promises keep, right? They do not expire. Um, and so you have them at his word. And so how do we learn the word, right? Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so um, you hear me say that the distance uh, between your problem and your deliverance is your faith. But how do we get that faith, right? It comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we've got a little Romans 10 and 17 there um, and, and Hebrews 11 and 1 there. So, so take those, those, those verses and, and put them into memory as you're walking here. Now, if you're on Facebook Live, you're seeing um, this, this banner that we keep putting up week by week, and I need to get that into your mind. I need you to understand, and need being a very powerful word, that you are God's investment. Take ownership in that tonight. It's personal accountability. Again, if this is your first time in here, we're talking about for this year, a sound investment strategy. And we're comparing and contrasting how you invest your time, your effort, your monies, your spirituality and things, right, into stuff. But what we want to build the case is, is for how God 
has invested into you, his prized possession, right? Take ownership in that. And then we've got some collective responsibility as one body in Christ. And for those that are repeat offenders here, you know this, but again, we, we want to have this repetition, right? If you're lifting weights or you're running, you get that rep repetition to build conditioning and that conditioning building endurance and that endurance allows you to go through some things that when the times get tough, you can believe some things. So when the world tells you, right, this world that, that, that hates you, right? Jesus told us, he says, um, you know, know that if, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. A servant, no servant is greater than his master, right? So the world is going to condemn you, but Jesus Christ has set you free. You're his investment. You're God's investment. And so that's a very important thing that I believe that we need to start every session, at least for this year, um, reinforcing. Because the world will tear you down, but God's work will build you up. And that's why we got to inverse this thing. Uh, social media will tear you down and make you feel like you're inadequate because you don't make a million dollars. And if you make a million, you should be making two. And if you're a, a, a gazillionaire, you should be a trazillionaire, right? It, it, the world is just insatiable. But God is saying, come after me, all those who thirst um, and hunger, right? All those who are hungry and thirsty. And, and, and so, so, so those that have the insatiable appetite of the world, they can't understand the message of the cross, right? Because he's given your heart's desire and what you really are looking for, because he's invested in you. And what he's looking in terms of that return on investment is for you to go out into that world and make disciples of all nations, right? To go and to preach and to teach. And just even by your example, to go and be open doors to his kingdom, be those light bearers. Can we do that tonight? All right. So as we've been doing this last couple of weeks, we have an opening activity, uh, participatory. Uh, you can hide behind a camera, but you can't hide from God. He says everything that's in the dark comes to light. Right. So we want to have some things that you consider um, some write down. Uh, and so hopefully those, again, that are repeat offenders have started bringing pen and paper or got uh, an iPad or a tablet. And you're, you're, you're typing on this because this is good stuff. Because here we don't believe in nine to five Christians. What I mean by that, and really what I'm talking about nine to five is just clocking in and clocking out. We don't, we, this, this is our way of life, right? We are the reborn man and one, uh, and men and women of God. Um, and this is who we are. This is our lifestyle. This is what we um, do. This is who we are. And so it's not about just coming to church service, um, be it either physical as of, uh, and we're speaking that thing as of the 27th, or, or virtually, right? It's not just punching in that time clock and saying, whoo, I was there. But it's not only being there, but being there, right? And you hear me talk about that, but physically, mentally, spiritually, all of that. Because every time God's word goes forth, and it's my second time saying this, a seed is being planted. That seed, uh, be it today, tomorrow, whenever, is, is, it's, it's germinating and it's, it's coming to life. Um, and that seed that once it sprouts might not just be for you, but just think about it. Long ago, when a seed is planted, those crops, how many folks does it necessarily take care of, right? If not just yourself for a particular season, but maybe others that you're entertaining guests or your family or you go to sellers or think about a great oak tree and, and the ability for that seed to produce a mighty and great uh, harvest in terms of a tree to provide shade and provide more uh, things or, or an orchard. Think about it. It started from a very humble beginning. Um, it might have been one scrawny looking tree to a, a, a couple of trees to a whole slew that becomes an orchard and be able to produce that fruit. That's that's how we are. But every one of those seeds had a destination and that seed had to go and to die. It had to die in order to be resurrected and to grow. That is us. We have to put self to death in order to grow. And so we're, we're putting aside the old and, and taking on a new. But what a lot of Christians have a, a hard time and they struggle with, right? And I really believe this is no fault of a lot of the ministries uh, that they've been into, but a lot of folks seem to think that the finish line is real, is, 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 is it, right? When you come to Christ, when you come to believe in him for your salvation, your eternal salvation, a lot of us believe that that's the finish line, but Lord, glory to God, that's merely the start, right? Now, you could choose, like the other nine lepers, to go your opposite way, receive your deliverance, and go. But the cost of discipleship is that you deny yourself. Remember what Jesus says. He says, if anyone is to come after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross daily, right? So we're walking. That's, that's, that's one of the themes here in this ministry. We're walking because I can't afford for you just to be 
the, the type of person to clock in and clock out, because guess what? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he is the author of deception. He's the author of lies. He works tirelessly and with that word that we talked about over these last couple of weeks called enmity. He has a pure hatred for you. He is not good to you, and he is not good for you, and he's roaring, right? He's coming. He seeks to devour you, and he's incessant, right, until he grabs hold of you. So you want to be able to put on that full armor, but how can you put on that full armor, right? If you don't even know what the full armor is, right? And so, so we want to do that. We want to uh, equip and power encourage you more than just a few minutes on a Sunday, but we want to have your touch points on a Monday, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then come back, get your fill back up on a Sunday and see, and as you're doing this, you're yearning and you're, you're longing for more and you're pulling from the ministry. And so that means that we have to go back to our heavenly father and ask for more, right? Um, because he's given gifts to the church. And it's not just me, it's all of y'all. We are the church. We are the people. We are the church. And and so that is the charge in terms of being filled up with God's word, that seed that we talked about. And so I'm asking you tonight to consider the last time you were jealous or envious of something or someone. Okay, now I know this thing called uh, virtual Bible study is a good thing for some because we can't see the the face like folks uh, have gotten a, 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 a something very sour, something very bitter, um, yep. or you got gas face and, 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 and you know, like a little Scooby-Doo and a little mystery gas is going around. You, you got to just think about that. And we're going someplace with this. When was the last time that you were jealous or envious of someone? OK, um, and how did that make you feel? Or, and, and, and how did you act? Now, I'll, I'll start off. Right. Um, I, I, I want I, I want you to consider that, and then I want you to write it down. Write down or type in your response, um, an ensuing result, right, i.e. the consequence or the output of that, okay, um, and the impact to yourself or to the others, right? And so I'll tell you, um, maybe not the last time, but a time uh, that I was jealous or envious. I, I can go back to when I was, was, was much younger, you know, and you got to take the standardized tests uh acts acts and i gotta i gotta admit i took preparatory um and, and self-directed study and so forth but how many folks know that that there's just some things that that you aren't good at right and, and standardized tests just as one of them okay um and clint eastwood i think said it best when he said a man's got to know his limitations well that was my limitation so having taken act or set three times and, and getting you know very minimal scores uh, and then going and try, taking a shot at the ACTs. Um, I remember the, the last time I took the ACT, the person I'm sitting next to, come to find out, came one short of maxing it. Now, I don't know what the numbers are now. It's been years. And I, if I never have to see SAT, ACT, or any other kind of standardized test again, uh, I, it will be too soon. But here I am, very slowful and, and struggling and, and barely got the minimum, right? Um, and so how did that make me feel? What was the ensuing result? Uh, I had a burning desire to go and just wanting to, to just to thump that dude on the head, right? Uh, and, and, and just filled with a little bit of rage. And here I am, I'm struggling. Like you can't just think some points in my direction, right? Um, and that, that carries forward. Um, but you know what? It was, it was, it was going to be all right because uh, standardized tests might have got me, but uh, diligent study didn't, but then, you know, further along, other standardized tests, other standardized tests might have gotten me, but diligent studying didn't, right? But that jealousy, that envy, right, um, left me feeling some kind of way, right? Um, more recent times, you, you can you can think, and maybe I'm not talking about anyone in particular, maybe I'm talking about me, you know, which is not at tribunal, um, some folks go and get food for certain folks and some folks don't, right? You have have and have nots, right? I like to eat. I like to eat good stuff. And, and some people you know, may have gotten it and might have gotten it for some other family members. Again, not at tribunal in this, in this place, right? Um, but then jealousy and envy start feeling, uh, filling up and then maybe dissatisfaction might start hitting. And then, so now I'm going, because I didn't get such and such now I'm hangry, you know, the combination of hungry and angry, and, and, and now emotions start to come out, right, and Pavlovian response, you know, Pavlov and his dog, it rings a bell, and the dog starts salivating, and then uncontrollably when they start hearing that, so, you know, those are, those are some results, so that's a more recent example there, and so 
as I've considered, and I already had mine written down, uh, my, my couple examples there, um, you know, share your responses. Uh, we'd love to hear from you either on the chat or on if, if, you, if you're plugged into Zoom um, and I send out those reminders um, that, that we do have Zoom. Um, and if you wanna be collaborative, um, you can come up on the net there and you can talk. Uh, or if you just wanna stay on Facebook Live and kind of be at, at, at Periscope depth in the submarine, just put it in the chat there. Um, we all got situations we're talking about, but this, these are learning activities to help us to, to learn some things and to be able to relate a little bit. And in other words, um, have some application of what the word is talking about. And I'll show you, I'll show you that here in a second. All right, so to put in the chat on a Zoom chat, um, when I say chat, I mean the Facebook live chat and those that are coming in, take the lead on um, YouTube once I post it, then feel free to put it in the comments there for YouTube. Um, those that have our Twitter account, and I'm gonna ask, um, I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Pastor Talisa to, or, or, or Sister Kayla to put in the, um, the Twitter handle so you can put it in there. Uh, we're going to start having it in there. Just put some stuff there um, so we can start following that. Or, um, you know, what I, one of the things I want to do is I want to start posting it throughout the week. Um, and you, you, you can plug in there. You can be participatory there, right? Um, because really what I want to see is I want, I want you to see what the Bible says about a certain particular thing, what a passage has, right? It's applicability as a whole to the body, the modern day church, and in particular use. So we take particular... Uh, personal accountability, collective responsibility, and then engage leadership as one body of Christ of how we look to resolve that. Again, we're, we're, we're in Genesis. We're in Genesis chapter four. Um, and we're going to go to the, the, the midsection of Genesis chapter four. We focused the last two weeks on Genesis chapter four, one through nine. And, and in particular there, we're going to hit on some scriptures there of why Cain, right, um, had a situation on his hand. It quickly became a problem that God warned him about, that God warns us daily on our temperament, right? Uh, because what he has given is enough, but yet we lust for the things all around us instead of going for the love that's already around us. And that's a recurring theme of the depraved state of mankind, right? And so that's why we're talking about the cost of sin. And we're going to talk tonight about law and order, all right? Um, but I need you to share those responses with at least somebody. Somebody in your particular household or somebody that you're close to um, and, and even someone maybe on your job or in your school or somebody that you can, can share because what I want you to do is I want you to see um, yourself I want you to see others and I want you to see your impact your actions and their impact on others right and then what the bible tells us there so um, a little bit different this week I want you to capture um, after that sharing and then that's not really different but I want you to take a look through the scriptures, because again, I can tell you things all day long. You can chuckle at my experiences. Um, you, you can take a look and say, that's a very sad man that, that, that went around hangry like that instead of just going and getting some stuff, right? And I can tell you all kinds of things about how gateway foods lead to other things. And that's probably the, the, the thing for me the most, the gateway foods. And I probably found myself eating things that I shouldn't, all because I found myself being envious of other folks eating things um i probably had no business eating anyways um and and went down a road that I, I i didn't need to go so while that's a great story that'll take you someplace but it's not going to take you to where you need to be so as we go through the story uh, of cain and and his plight take a look at how he got caught up all in his feelings right um and instead of turning to god's word to alleviate that circumstance, situation, and problem he had, he allowed those feelings to fester into jealousy and into envy, to dissatisfaction that led to anger, all because his pride would not allow him to go and receive the word of God. Does that, that sound like somebody? I mean, I've been there. I told you the pride. I told you the last two weeks. Pride is one of the things that I, I've, I've had to work on uh, a, a lot over time, right? But pride is a gateway sin, if you will. Now, you're not going to necessarily see that in the Bible, but we're going to talk about three things that are caused to fall. And in the spoiler alert, we're going to say a little bit earlier here, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, right? And the lust of the eye. Those three things cause us to stumble. So if we're talking here in Living Spirit Ministries about how do we learn to walk, 
And we learn to walk one step at a time. And if you if you take a subsection of that, we learn by knowing God, right? You know, that, that old J.B. Hickson uh, saying, we, we, we learn about God, we then trust in God, and then we believe in God. And so that's how we're learning to walk here, Living Spirit Ministries. But you can't do that if you're so prideful that you won't take the help that is presented to you, right? So I need you to, to take a look at these 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 uh, these activities, these exercises here, um, and as we go forth, um, to apply that to God's word, um, uh, or really to apply God's word to your situation and circumstance, and see, and now you start to see the relevancy of understanding and knowing God's word, and then being able to dissect that, coming with questions, all right, and so that's where that reflection part is, you know, I need you to reflect on God's grace and mercy in the midst of your sin, right, so, uh, Romans 3 tells us that there's no one righteous. There's none righteous among us, not one, right? So we all got to admit that we're sinners, right? There's no one that's righteous, okay? Then you go down a little bit further. Romans 3 and 23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it's not my word, right? It's God's word. And his word does not go out void. So no matter how holy we think we are, right? This is what Jesus was trying to tell us in the midst of the uh, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, and really center sector, sec, center sector there in Matthew 6. He's telling us that, that self-righteousness just ain't going to get It's just not going to get you there, right? Your own piety, not going to get you there. But if you believe in, if you, you know, you backward plan off of that, you trust in them and you, and you know him, right? So in other words, you know him, you trust in him, and then you come to believe in him. That his righteousness is what saves, right? Um, and so reflect upon that in the midst of your struggles there, um, God's grace and mercy in the midst of your sin, right? His covering. All right, so take a look at that. So hopefully um, I've pontificated enough that you've been able to write that down. Um, some of y'all probably are savvy of taking your phone, taking a, a, a photocopy or taking a photocopy, taking a, a picture. And if not, hey, these uh, the, these uh, Bible studies are memorialized on the Living Spirit Ministry uh, Facebook site and then as well on the YouTube site. So just another excuse for you to go up in there um, and explore it. All right. So moving on along. So this is another uh, slide that I want to keep up here. I want to talk about that cost. And initially we talked about the cost in relation to the return on investment. Right. And then naturally we talked about the return on investment. We want maximum uh, inputs with minimal outputs, right? And so really in, in the natural, that that's that's the savvy broker that you want. You want the person that can get you maximum gains with the minimal inputs. Now there's going to be some risk involved in that, right? So you can't just go very conservative and expect to have high yields over a short amount of time. I mean, that's wishful thinking, but normally that's not how that works, right? Um, but with a little bit of risk, um, hopefully managing that risk, you get, you get some better returns, but truly we want to have no risk in, in all the returns. And that's realistically just not there, but God in his infinite grace and in his infinite love, that agape love that we talked about, um, he gives us all right. When he sends, when he sent Jesus Christ onto the cross, he, he gave us his all, he went all in for us. And so, when we look at that, we look at what it cost to him. It cost a sacrifice in terms of the son. But when we think of sin, you know, from left to right, there's a new nature. And we, we, we built this case in Genesis 3. And we're not going to go over all this. But um, there is a newness that is not of God. And that, that newness resulted in sin um, in dwelling in us uh, that led to iniquity, a total depraved state, right? A totality of that nature, a new nature, right? Um, a new position, a new walk, and a new outcome. And none of those uh, are the original image of what God had. And so we have a corrupted image that we talked about. And we talked about how if you have a corrupted computer, uh, you got a couple of ways in which you can go there. You can try to go and surgically remove some of that things. But, but again, you've got to go in and you've got to, you got to get rid of some things, right? Or you got to completely wipe out that image. But either way, it necessitates a change. And those things that are unwilling to change it's gone. It's junked. And so um, the outputs of all that is a death, right? RIP, Mr. or Miss Electronic, 
But for us, this situation is real because each of us is appointed once to die, uh, right? Uh, and to be judged. And so that's where that Hebrews 9 and 27, we're all appointed once to die. Because then we talked about this. From the time that we're conceived to the time that we go back to the grave, uh, we have an expiration date. That's why time is so important to us. God is time. He spans time. It doesn't matter to him, right? But for us in our sinful nature, uh, we have an expiration date. We're like uh, a, a carton of milk, right? And so, so or, or some cheese. We might think we get better with time, but there is an expected end for us. Now, we don't know what that expected end is, but we will die and we will be judged. Now, again, if, if you listen to Sunday sermon, you listen to last week's uh, Bible study, you know that those who are in Christ Jesus, um, and those who have believed and who have trusted in him, um, have eternal life. So our position is secure, right? Um, our practice, maybe not so much, but our position is secure. And so we go before the Bema seat, right? Where we're judged based upon our works and promoting uh, the kingdom of God, right? The, 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 the gospel of grace, um, not based upon our sins because Jesus came um, to atone for past, present, and future. But we still go on sinning, right? So that's the kind of the paradox there. And so what Paul warns us about is that we shouldn't go on sinning because we have a new nature. We have a new life, a new regenerated life. Um, and that can cost us heavenly rewards, right? We'll still get into the kingdom, but there are still much to work towards, right? Um, and it could lead to a premature death. And those are just a few of the things there. But the most important thing is, is anytime we sin, um, we have separation from God. And that's that first one that we have there. Uh, and separation from God is never a good thing. If it's a millisecond um, to years. And, and so we don't want that. And we want to be where God is. Um, and then I want you to lastly on the slide, the last thing is that word eternal, lasting or existing forever. We've talked about this in this week's sermon. We talked about it last week's and the week before's. Uh, Bible study. I got you to get the, on your mind and on the tip of your tongue that word eternal, uh, because eternal is forever. It's not some fanciful word that is hyperbole. Um, it means what it says. And so we don't want to have eternal separation from our God. Your heart should be that just a millisecond, right? A fraction of time uh, is too long away from your God. He is your power source. Um, think about your phone, right? Your phone in, in, or your electronics, you really want it to be able to be charged up so that if you unplug it, uh, it'll last forever. Well, that's not how God intended us. Uh, if we get unplugged from him, we, sh we, we ought to be of the nature that we will wither and, 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 and power down and eventually power off. That's our mentality that we have to have. And so we have to stay plugged into him because our batteries can't run by themselves. And, and sorry for you, those of you who have EVs, the electric vehicles, and, and, and tout how those charges will go all over the place to get out of combustible fuel. Well, we run off of God, right? His spirit, his word, right? His, his, his holy essence within us. And without it, we're not going uh, very far at all. We'll go someplace, but it's not where we need to go. So, so think about that. And then at the bottom there, let's, let's, let's talk about sin, right? We, 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 we've beat around the bush, but let's talk about sin. Is this a sound investment? Uh, you can probably write that down too, or just keep it in the forefront of your mind. Is sound uh, is sin a sound investment? Yeah, it might be good to you right now, but it certainly isn't good for you, and it's definitely not what is intended um, for you. All right. So just a recap of, of of where we've been, and we're not going to go over all this because I talked a little bit, but uh, I want you to go um, and look. If you're looking on a screen, hopefully you see Genesis four one one through nine, but highlight it there if you can see it is is verses are verses eight through nine. And I just want to read it real quickly. It says, now Cain talked with Abel. This is the output of what I talked about, right? Cain wasn't accepted because he gave a poor effort, right? That was not right by God. He was not pleasing in the sight of God. And because of that, his flesh reared up. This flesh that was governed by a carnal mindset, right? Driven by worldly things. Um, and God gave him some sound counseling there, but because of Cain's pride, it was a pride, it was a condition of pride, right? It's not a heart condition, it was full of pride, and pride is not good. And so that thing began to stew, and it began to boil over. Think about a pot of water that you filled up, and as it begins to boil, and the science of it all, and it begins, and if left unattended, boils over, it spills over, and the ramifications uh, behind us. Well, this is 
such that God warned them and he talked about sin crouching at a door. Um, and, and if he didn't take care of it and control it, right? Remember, God gave dominion over some things and he gave them some power and authority. But most of all, he gave them him, right? He gives us him. And so before we go in and do anything rash, we should seek him out. But that's where pride you know, takes hold of us and takes us down a dark path, right? But if we come to the light, we understand that we only can see the light by and through him. And he is the light. So we need to go to the light, right? Somebody needs to receive that. But we come down to verse 8 here. It says, now Cain talked with Abel, right? This is on the heels of talking with God. He talked with, his, with, 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 talked with Abel, his brother, and, and, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. So we have the first murder, right? We had the first lie in Genesis 3, um, you know, really the first hide-and-seek game. Uh, and here we have another hide-and-seek game, and we have the first murder. Um, and, and so once again, there is some separation. Remember that position that we talked about? Um, we're separated from God uh, when we sin. And so in verse 9, for the second time that we see in the Bible here, God calls out. He says, then the Lord said to Cain, right? Remember, originally it was to Adam that he called out. Um, and it's not that God can't see us or hear us, right? According to Isaiah 59. So our iniquities that have separated us. So, so receive that. The iniquities, that, that total condition of the sinful nature has caused a new position and separated there, right? Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? All right, now, you know, hopefully none of y'all have physically killed a sibling uh, or a relative or, or anything like that. But we have probably done that lustfully in our eyes, uh, envious and jealous. And this, you can see how these questions that I ask and I formulate it build upon this. I want you to take the word and apply it to your life and see um, see how Abel responded or how Cain, well, Abel really didn't have a choice, uh, but how Cain responded, how God responds, and how you respond to God's word. You're at the same crossroad that Cain was at, right? There's something that's eating at you from the inside out that is making you jealous, making you envious, but, but, but remember Galatians 5, right? Where Paul talks to the church of Galatia, right? He talks to the Galatians and tells them about the evidence of the flesh, right? As opposed to the fruit of the spirit. And they're at war with one another. They're at enmity with one another, right? The spirit and the flesh, they can't occupy that same space because one is of the world and one is of the kingdom and they don't like each other, right? Which one are you letting in? So the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? We're in Genesis chapter four, verse nine. And Cain comes back and he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And we talked about how there's no personal accountability there. Well, I want you to look at here at the, at the lower right-hand corner here. I've got 1 John 2, uh, 13 through 17 there. It says, do not love the world. Oh, this is what I was talking about. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Now, before we go any further, remember uh, in Matthew 6, I remember the Sermon on the Mount there, and, and self-righteousness is just, just not going to do, right? Um, and, and remember, the, the Sermon on the Mount is really uh, uh, how we need to be living uh, once the kingdom comes, right? And the Beatitudes talks about really the code of conduct, which is in Matthew 5, and then really here's center sector. In Matthew 6, he's talking about who are you going to serve, right? To seek first his righteousness, then the rest of us will be added. But don't try to accumulate the things of this world and then try to get guys. That just isn't going to work because you're going to be remiss about leaving behind the things of the world. You're going to be anchored and tied to that. But if you're tied to God, he'll give you your heart's desire, right? Matthew 6 and 33. Um, but he tells us that, that you can't serve mammon and, and God. You can't, what I call fool's goal, but it's it's really just, you know, money or, 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 or monetary things to take the place of God, right? Anything that, that, that comes before God is taking the place of God. Can we receive that? Um, so John, right, the one whom, whom God loved, right, the, the one who was closest to him, catches this revelation. He says, do not love the world or the things in the world, right? Um, and, and just a side note, some geek knowledge there, you know, the, the book of John, all right, the gospel is really meant for unbelievers, right? Um, but the epistles are made for believers, um, his writings and for, for discipleship and so forth. So just a little bit, uh, a little bit of geek knowledge there. So just consider the audience whenever you read any scripture there, 
to, to see how it applies, right? So he says, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hmm. All right, First John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, we heard about that, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world, all right? First John chapter 2, verse 17. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever, right? You compare and contrast First John chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. And, and, and really, if you take the whole of that chapter, but if you don't have a whole lot of time, cross-reference just these four verses and put them alongside of Matthew 6, okay? Um, put them along with Matthew 6 and see what the word of God is saying in terms of seeking God out before all things, right? And then let God work out your problems, right? And your jealousy and your envy will subside because your love of Christ who has forgiven you of your sins, right? Who's forgiven me of my sins and who, oh, by the way, provides all things for you, right? You just have to believe that he will. Right. So we ask in this ministry, do you believe God? Do you believe he is who he says he is? Do you believe he'll do what he says he'll do? But most importantly, do you believe he'll do it for you? It's easy to see when sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so get theirs. But do you believe? Right. Let patience have its perfect work. OK, so 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 trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lead not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. According to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and he will direct your paths, right? Okay, so we're moving on. We're moving on to tonight's scripture, which is the center part of, of Genesis, um, Genesis chapter 4, right? The center sector of this, um, and, and 10 through 15 here. So we're going to read this real quickly, um, and while I read it, um, you can focus on some of the, the schematics there. My favorite there is the law and order. Uh, Anyone is out there and wants to give a dun dun, then uh, you feel free to. You can put it into the comments there, the however you want to spell it, dun dun. Um, but we're talking a little law and order tonight. And how God deals with sin, how you deal with sin, and 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 how others do, right? How how the world deals with it. Okay, so Genesis chapter four verses ten through fifteen, and it says, and this is on the heels, right? Remember, he says, "Am I my brother's keeper?" So. That was the cliffhanger that we had the last two weeks. And so now we're coming in to this episode, right? And he says, and he said, what have you done? This is God. Once again, this is the second time he's asked this question, right? Um, but this time it's on the heels uh, of a murder, right? Um, and it says, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. In verse 11, Genesis chapter 4, verse 11. So now you are cursed from the earth. Uh-oh, remember what we talked about beforehand. Sin um, always results in judgment um, and requires atonement, right? So here we are, which is open its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Genesis chapter four, verse 12. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. This is God's judgment. And Genesis chapter four, verse 13, it says, and Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear, right? Is this not us? Is this not us? Oh, Lord. Now we, we knew in our hearts, right? That, that, that something wasn't necessarily right. And I will build a case for that by referring back to Genesis chapter three. The only thing that Adam and Eve could not have in a garden of Eden was the, the, the tree to eat from the fruit from the eat fruit from the tree uh, of knowledge of good and evil, right? And so once they ate from that, God said they have now become like us, they know good and evil, right? So innately we have the ability to discern what is right or wrong. Can you follow me? That's not my words, that's that's that's, that's the Bible's word. Check it out. Genesis chapter three. So here we have the situation of where sin in the form of pride came and bubbled up that if sin was just bad enough by itself left unattended to itself that would be bad right if if it just stayed with eve 
it would have been bad, but sin is contagious, and it impacted the man of God, which then uh, led to, you know, some things that impacted the whole creation of God. And so here, because of one man's pride, uh, stemming from his fleshly desires, his envy, his jealousy, right, lust of eye, pride of life, lust of the flesh, it boiled over and killed his brother, right? And so as a result of that, now God is passing out and administering judgment. So it says, surely you, a, a, a Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Uh, and in verse 14, it says, surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. Remember, he was a tiller of the ground. So now God has, has cursed his very work. I shall be hidden from your face. There's that separation, right? That's that separation that we talked about. The cost of sin, if you will. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. All right. So the cost of sin, right? That, that, that's, that's center focus right there. But in verse 15, and this is how the Lord responds. He says, and the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Now, now I want to bring into focus something real quick. The Lord warned, right? How, do, how does the Lord deal with this on this thing? He, he, he traditionally he warns us, right? Um, he, he, he'll warn us about uh, sin, right? He'll, he'll, he'll traditionally warn us. Um, he'll judge us and then he'll, he'll deal with us. Right. Um, but glory to God, he has mercy on us in dealing with us. And ultimately we have the grace of God upon us, but I want to put in perspective again, with your little learning assignment there of how you dealt with your jealousy, your envy, your, your, your rage there, uh, how it impacted others and how maybe theirs impacted you. Um, and to really apply the story of, of, of Cain's walk here, at least up to this point, uh, to your life. And, and how, when you're reflecting upon how God deals with sin, look at his compassion of how he deals with his children, right? Um, because one, innately, we know what's right or wrong. Two, um, when we're in the midst of this thing and God has given us warning and we do not heed that warning, when we don't consult him when this thing um, begins to overtake us, right? And let's not be overtaken by sin, but let's be overtaken by God's love and it's seeing it all around us and working in our lives. But that one thing, that one shiny thing in our life that we can't have, we seem to glean off of and take it. And whatever it is, we won't be stopped until we get it, but we don't consult God. But then when we fall because of the lust of the eye, the lust of the, uh, the, 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 the lust of the flesh uh, and the pride of life, right? Um, then we want to say the punishment is too great. We want to, we want to then count the cost. But if we count the cost before we even invest into the sin, can you, can you follow me on this? And then are our lives a little bit differently and are the lives around us a little bit different um, because of that? So that's, that's, that's how I'm asking you to, uh, to, to take a look at this and apply it to your life and not just a one shot um, type of thing. I, I ask that you live this, you to take a look at it, um, because there, there are things in our lives that could be preventable, right? Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's not difficult. He realizes it's difficult, but when he is your sole provider, S-O-L-E, your only, as well as your sole provider, S-O-U-L, um, and you begin to trust in him and to believe in him, but first you got to know him. And so... Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we're, 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 we're knowing our God and that he is good for us, good to us, right? And he'll never leave us or forsake us. So I'm asking you there, as you see the, the scales of justice there, right? Scales of justice are meant to be uh, balanced, right? And that word iniquity really comes from being unbalanced, right? Uh, unequal uh, when, we, when we look at that. Um, that's where it gets some of its stems from, all right? But the scales are supposed to be uh, equal. And they say lady justice is blind, right? But we know that's not always true in the natural. Um, because we all have that same carnal mindset. We all had that same sinful nature. But when we come before God, 
he judges us according to his will, right? Um, and that's, <laughs> that's far superior to anything we could find in this world. So why are we looking to the world for validation? So that's, that's one thing there, right? Um, in, in, so, you know, my question there is what, what's your uh, thoughts on justice and how do you judge sin, right? Because um, truly justice is not necessarily blind. Um, but the scales there should be equal, right? You should have that equal shot. But in the world, you're not always going to get that shot. Um, but before God, you always will. And if you want to look no further than um, David, David did a whole lot of, I mean, you could, you could teach just as much from his wrongdoings as you could from his praise, right? And his worship. But the one thing that David understood, because he loved God, um, he, he loved God with all his heart. And, and the Bible just clearly illustrates that, right? Um, is that he'd rather have been judged by his God than God's people, right? Can we receive that? Um, in other words, he'd rather be validated by his God um, than the people around him. And, and, and that's something for us to be, uh, um, to, to take a look at and apply to our lives. So center sector here, and I know we're running low on time. Um, <laughs> I, again, big Law and Order fan here, um, the original series. Uh, it's the opening credits say, in a criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, right? You probably heard this if, you, if you've seen Law and Order, any of the iterations, uh, some of the cheap knockoffs uh, or the original, right? Uh, represented by two se separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories, right? Okay, so we talked earlier about Hebrews chapter 9 and 27. It talks about everyone is appointed once to die and then to be judged, right? And so um, thankfully, because of the propitiation that is our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he has become a propitiation for our sin. So when God looks at us, he doesn't necessarily see us. He sees Jesus Christ and all of his perfection, the, the, the unblemished lamb of God. And therefore, right, uh, we have reconciliation. And we talked about that um, in terms of John chapter five. I, I preached upon this uh, in the opening, uh, my opening diatribe that, that hopefully built the case for you. It was a little bit off of where I was going, but but it was building a case of why not to compromise because in Romans 8, we talk about there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Comes from Jesus, not us. And, um, and unless the spirit is in you, you're not his. Um, we're adopted as sons and daughters because of that, right? And Romans 5 talks about um, now that we have been justified in faith, and that faith isn't in us, it isn't in the world. It's in uh, Christ Jesus, so don't compromise. We have now been reconciled back on the God. So when we talk about going back to Romans 8, if God is for us, who could be against us? That gives us a whole new connotation, right? Because if we were separated by God, hold that in your mind for a second. If we had art with God, and if God is ultimately the one, Jesus Christ in particular, uh, God the Son, is the one who is going to judge us, right? And we have been reconciled back onto him, and there is now no condemnation. Then nothing else in this world should bring us to tears or fear or, or cause us to compromise, because, because the, ultimate, um, the ultimate power in, in our lives, seen and unseen, has, has brought us back into the fold. We are made right with him, not by our own actions, right? Because there's nothing we can do, right? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life, right? Um, the wages of sin. So our sinful nation, our cost of sin, it's like that cockroach that I got there. Um, you know, some raid came along, the orchid man came along, spray, bam, dead. That's your sin. You're, you're, you're four, um, you're, you're, well, you're not four feet, but you're two feet and two arms up in the air on your backside, dead, right? Uh, a natural death and an eternal death, right? You can be born once, um, again, um, be born once and, 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 and die twice, a natural death and eternal death. But you can be uh, born twice and die once, and that's that natural death, right? And so that's the juxtaposition between the cockroach uh, on the left side there or on the right side there, uh, choosing to put your faith in the right object. You can put your um, your, your, your faith 
in this thing called life. And the reason you want to look at some symbology why I use the roach um, is because roaches are, 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 are supposed to be some resilient type creatures. They're supposed to be able to survive nuclear war. And they apparently haven't been impacted by the vid or the Rona. Um, and, and they're just, you know, you encounter these jokers, you step on them, they keep take a lick and keep on ticking, no offense to Timex, right? Um, um, but they, they are apparently supposed to survive all kind of things. But you're not that roach. Well, hopefully you're not that roach. And I don't think you want to put it to chance. But choosing in terms of this, uh, in terms of the police, um, the investigating, uh, the, the investigate that crime, right? There's a crime committed in, in Genesis 4, 1 through 9. There's a crime that's very applicable to our lives. And, it, and that crime happened long before the physical ever manifested. And hence why God showed up on the scene to warn his servant, right? He's showing up on the scene for you and I each and every day by waiting through his word, um, through the unction of his spirit. Right. That crime was committed in our hearts and in our minds before it ever manifested. This is why the New Testament tells us to guard our hearts. Right. And, and, and Jesus talks about that. We've committed lust. We committed murder. Uh, not even if we've done the physical, but if we have it committed in our eyes, in, in, in our minds. And so this was the warning, the true warning that, that, that God is giving to Cain. And it comes to pass because he didn't rule over it by staying nested into God's word, right? The word of God went forth to the man of God. The man of God was either asleep during the sermon, right? His mind was focused on work or on a pot roast or doing whatever it, is, whatever it was that he did for relaxation. But it wasn't on when the word of God was coming from the mouth of God, right? And so because of that, he didn't receive the word of God in a time in which he needed something to stand on. All he could do was stand on his feelings. And because of those feelings, um, we, we talk about there's no one righteous among us, not one. There's no one righteous, right? And so sin crouched. The very thing, um, as Job talked about, the very thing that I fear the most has come upon us, right? And so, so the wages of sin is death. And so we're not like that roach. We're not, uh, we're, we're not like the cats that have nine lives. Um, That's all we got. And so we got to make that informed decision. And so there was some investigation into that. There were some charges brought and Cain was prosecuted. But glory to God, his mercies endure forever, right? And so as we get into this, the Lord says the same, we'll, we'll go into the latter half of uh, a Genesis uh, and we'll talk about the response. Um, but I, I hope you all are able to take at least these first 15 verses um, and apply them to your life in, in terms of whenever you've been jealous or envy, or maybe uh, this week you might have some encounters. But look at those scales of justice. The scales of justice have been brought back balanced, not by our own actions, because we can't afford it. We haven't earned it. We certainly don't deserve it. Um, but, but because of the cross, Right, the the scales of justice have been balanced again, um, and so if we believe that, as Paul talks about, let us not go on sinning, according to 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 Romans chapter six, um, because we no longer have association with that, and so the cost of that sin is a life. All right, and so we we have put off the old and put on the new. All right. So if that sounds good to you, there's there's some good nuggets in there to apply to your life. Um, some good nuggets to apply to to all of our lives there. And so uh, I'm just asking that you go forth, take a look at that word. Hopefully something was good uh, to you today. Feel free to rewind it. Feel free to take these references. Again, we're not clocking in nine to five or from 45 minutes or just an hour. We're, we're living this thing. All right. So if it sounds good to you, we're just going to go into a word of prayer. I appreciate you all for attending. And again, shameless plug for those that are in the area, uh, don't have a church home, would like to come and celebrate with us on Sunday at 11 o'clock. I believe it's 951 South McPherson Road, uh, McPherson Church Road. Um, probably leaving something out there. Sweet 102. All right, we'll have the flags out. I got to put them together, but look for the flags. Look similar to this banner that you see up there. Uh, you, you see the Holy Spirit diving down off of the cross. You'll be out there. 
uh, come and check us out. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. So uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to pray out. And we thank you for attending. Heavenly Father, we call to you tonight. And we thank you for a bountiful word, Father God, that has set our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls free. Father God, thank you for meeting us at the point of need. And thank you, Father God, for ordering our steps. Father God, thank you for touching our hearts tonight that we might lose self, Father God, in order to receive you. Father God, our hearts are wide open for you tonight. Our feet, our Father God, are, are ready to move for you. Our hands are will, willing and ready to work for your cause, Father God. Let us go with the word of God as our tool, Father God. The Holy Spirit, Father God, as our strength, Father God, as we look towards the cross for our direction. And so, Father God, we are your light bearers, Father God, going forth into this world, bringing the light and the glory of your kingdom to them. Now, Father God, we thank you for not only meeting us at the point of need, but still, Father God, healing us, delivering us, and restoring us, Father God. Let this resuscitative nature, Father God, go on, not just for ourselves, but let us touch and agree with our, our, our Christian brothers and sisters, Father God, and let us go forth, Father God, and touch somebody's life. That even if that seed isn't meant to sprout in this season, Father God, that those who receive it, Father God, can make an informed decision about you, learning from the testimony that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And going from there. Now, Father God, thank you for all that you have done, seen and unseen. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. And Father God, thank you for binding up the separation between you and us. And we glory in your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, be blessed, and give some Jesus. See you Sunday.